Hello world, welcome to the 30th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant like Jarvis from the Iron Man comics and movies. In my fourth video, so very early in my channel, I tried to jump straight to building my own graphical user interface and struggled badly. So as you can see from the screen, this is um, technically a heads up display but a graphical user interface where he can see all the diagnostics of his suit. This is Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man. And so, um, you know, after several months of research, um, I went away from the initial plan in the fourth video, which was using a Python library called PyQt5. And I decided to go with Python's program library called uh, Pygame to make my own heads up display. So, in today's video and the second official Shane update, I'm going to show off the beginnings of my GUI. Uh, it's going to show our power status from a previous video and whether or not an Arduino board is connected. Uh, I was hoping to show you my heartbeat, but I'll show you in the code why I'm unable to do that yet. And so if this is your first time to my channel, I just want to quickly say this isn't a tutorial channel but we will go quickly through the code so you can see what Pygame looks like and how I used it. So let's start off here. Okay, I created a GUI. And let's run this. Alright, so it shows up and it says uh, power status. We are on AC power and we have 98% battery remaining. And right now, uh, the Arduino board is not connected. So first, I'm going to unplug my laptop from the wall. And we'll see it update the status live. And now it says we are on battery power. And we'll leave that alone for a little bit. And you can already see it went down. Now we have 97% battery remaining. Okay. Now I'm going to unplug my wireless mic. All right, now I'm going to add the Arduino board. And I have my heartbeat sensor from my last one. And so that has changed to we created a pulse sensor object, which is the first thing it shows when it starts. So now I'm going to unplug it and it switched to there's no Arduino board connected. Okay, I'm going to plug my wireless headset in. Charging battery. All right, so that is quickly what I'm going to do. So imagine the black background as uh, a camera looking forward. So I know in that picture I showed you that is it looking inward at Robert Downey Jr. That is just for the uh, audience when you're watching the movies to understand what he can see. If you've seen some of the movies, when the power goes out, he can only see through those little eye holes. And if you've seen any engineering or make it real videos on what his suit would really look like. That's a huge screen right there on the inside of his uh, tiny mask. You know what I mean? So that's kind of an inconsistency of what he can see on the inside. And so that's just for the audience. Versus this, which if I had a camera looking out, the black would have the um, you know the scene in the background or in the foreground so the camera would be looking forward if I turned on my webcam you know it would be facing inward so anyways it's just that uh, when people think of Jarvis and heads up display and AI they quickly think of Iron Man and uh, they have to know that a lot of that was for the movies so as you can see it, it went down to we have 96% battery remaining and it will continue to do that so let's exit out of that. Okay, let's go to the code. All right, so 
you will have to pip install pi game right here ignore this comment I was unable to get the camera working because the pi game dot camera does not work with Windows so I'm stuck I'm getting a critical er error and I'm working with a uh, stack overflow maybe I can fix it so you don't need this pygame.locals and then these are my own uh, import statements here that you won't need if you're trying to do this then you initialize pygame all right ignore those comments those are more camera so this pygame.display.set caption and this icon let me quickly show I didn't get a chance to show that off So running the GUI again, you can see up here, that's my little company symbol. You've seen a red one on that if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then right here, it says Shane. So that's what that does. It changes the icon and the uh, caption. Then you have to set the width and the height of the screen. I just showed those. Those are common in the tutorial. Um, what I'm eventually going to do is make it dynamic. So I am going to write a code to find the resolution of any monitor this code is ran on. And then, you know, do 95% of that resolution of width and height. That way, no matter what monitor I'm on or um, where I'm running Shane from, it will automatically adjust that. So then you start the screen. You pass it the width and height. And then I created my own color. It's a Cheyenne color. Let me get rid of this comma. So that's the Cheyenne color that you've seen. Um, it's popular in the Iron Man movies. That's the only reason why I chose it. Then you have to establish your own fonts. So I chose a 22 font and a 14 font. Uh, these are my own um, scripts that I wrote for the writing the power status and the heart rate on there so this is like I said this isn't a tutorial but we'll quickly go through it you can look at it um, what you do is you define a variable called the header you pass it the font false is bold so if it's true it's bold if it's false it's not bold color line is this the Cheyenne I created and then you create a, a rectangle a rect of it and then um, I wanted the left and right to be 15, 15 pixels away from the left and 15 pixels away from the right. And then you pass it mid left. So you can choose mid left or dot center. I chose mid left. And then I passed it the left and right and top and bottom coordinates. I did the same for the heart rate. You know, these are headers. So they have the big 22 font. And so with this one, though, I did the screen width for the left and right times 0.666. Because if you've seen the three lines, we'll show that later. I want it 15 pixels away from that second line. So I'm dividing the screen in thirds. And on that second line, so 66.6% .6 of the screen, plus 15. Top and bottom remains 15. Then I pass it left, right, and top, bottom. So the reason why it's important to define these variables right here, the width and height, you'll see other tutorials where they do not define the width and height um, in a variable. They just pass it here, hard-coded. And so the problem I have with that, though, is if you want to, you'll have to do math every single time you do the width and the height. And I don't want to do that. So whatever the width is, whether it's 1028 or 680, I want to divide it into thirds, so 66.6% .6 of the screen, make a line, plus 15 pixels after that. Okay, then you do a while loop. This is where it actually creates the screen. Um, the default, I believe, is 60 frames per second. And then you say running is true because you want it to run. Um, so while it's running, so while the way Python is worded, it says while running is true. It's the same thing. So while running equals true. You're going to screen fill. You're going to make it all black. 
right? So if you are doing what I'm doing, where you have something update automatically, you need to reset this screen.fill.black. I did not know that. 000 is the RGB for black. 255, 255, 255 is the screen fill RGB for white. Anything between that will be your color. Then I draw two lines. So I passed it that Cheyenne. And then first I put the first line at the 33% of the screen. So I divided it by uh, three. And this is the width right here, three. That's the width of the line. Think of it as a PowerPoint or Word. Then I drew a second line, right? And then I passed it this plugged in and battery status from um, my power status video. I did a video on that, so you can check that out. I'm not gonna cover that here. And then I passed in the text and the battery status text um, to the size 14 font. Then I create, every time you do a text, you do this text rectangle. And then I passed it where I wanted it to start. So plus 20 pixels away from the top and bottom, left and right for both. Then I did the same for the heart rate status. Unfortunately, when I run this heart rate monitor, it pulls up the first text it gets, which is that we created a pulse object, and then goes away. It keeps running. So it doesn't get my beats per minute. So I have to do something called threading. Threading is where you run two codes at the same time. I uh, don't quite know how to do that yet because I'm a beginner, I'm a novice. And so I will learn and post it on the next chain update. All right, so then this blit, this is you actually drawing it. So you draw the header, you draw the text, and you draw the uh, battery status check. So you, this is how you draw a line, draw dot line. This is how you draw a text, this blit. Okay. And then right here, pygame.display.flip. That means every frame per second, I'm restarting the code. So it goes all the way back here. Running is true. So it blacks out everything, draws the lines, checks the battery status. So if you did not have this display.flip and you did not have this screen.fill, it wouldn't update in real time. So I'm pretty sure my battery has uh, gone down even more. So now we're at 91%. And so when I plugged it into the wall, and this switches to we are on AC power, that because it changes every time the frame. So again, if you're going to try to have something update, you need this screen.fill to reset it to your original background, and this display.flip at the end. So that's your beginning. This is your end. And then you put this code in there for event in pygame.event.get, you need to quit. That change is running to false. And this changes to false, so this stops running. All right, this right here, except for all my uh, own stuff that I drew, so basically all the Cheyenne stuff you see, and then the Cheyenne itself, this is all on every single tutorial. I got this from like 10 tutorials, so I don't have any credit specifically to give out. But I do watch an uh, insane amount of YouTube videos. So just type in Python Pygame tutorial and you'll find the same code over and over and over again. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this update. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. This is a huge step in making something real. So if you want to continue watching me build this digital assistant, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you get updates when I publish new videos. Like this video and share it with any other friends you might have. Goodbye world.